today we're going to build a high-end gaming PC on a tight budget. And I get to use the Fractal Design Pop Mini Air Case, which I've wanted to build in for a while, so I'm excited. Uh, are you excited? No? Oh. Well, maybe you will be after this word from our sponsor. Are you tired of seeing that annoying activate Windows message quietly judging you and your life choices from the corner of your screen? Why don't you freaking do something about it and order a genuine Windows 10 key from SCD Key? Just go over to the Windows 10 Pro page on SCD Key and add it to your cart. And then get this. Get this, you guys. You could use my special super secret promo code DWEEB to save 25 freaking percent. And then you could use the key to activate your copy of Windows. And then you're, you're, you're done. You're, you're good to go. Oh, and once you're activated, you could upgrade to Windows 11 for free if you're into that sort of thing. Can you freaking believe it? No. No, you can't. Hello, I'm TechDweeb. Welcome. Thank you for clicking on the video. So, uh, yeah, today we're going to turn all this, this stuff right here, this pile of computer parts into a badass gaming PC. That's what we do with computer parts after all. <laughs> Pretty straightforward stuff. But this should be interesting for two reasons. First, this PC has to be built on a very tight budget. I'm building this PC for the grandkid of a friend of an uncle who is my uncle. It's my uncle's friend's grandkid. So this guy wanted to buy his grandkid an Alienware PC. <laughs> and my uncle got him in touch with me so I could tell him not to buy an Alienware PC for obvious reasons. And instead let me build him a PC. A better PC than an Alienware PC. He had a specific budget to stick to and as we were talking I was mentioning about how I'd be getting some upgrades for my personal PC soon and he suggested that he'd buy my upgrades and then we could use my old parts in his new PC. So I'd get an upgrade in exchange for building this PC basically. My upgrades were more expensive though and I didn't feel right about not giving him a good value for his money so I spent some extra money to get him some extra hardware for his PC within his budget. I'm not going to tell you the final budget because there's a good chance that the kid will see this video. Hey buddy, how's it going? And I don't want to be tacky and brag about the price of his present, but I'll just say that this is a very high-end PC for the price that he paid for it. And it's way better than an Alienware of the same price. Like, w way better. Not even close, actually. And the other reason that this video will be interesting is that we get to build the Fractal Design Pop Mini Air Case. I've had my eye on this case for a while now. It came out just last year, actually. And this will be a micro ATX build, so if all goes as planned, it should be a nice, small, efficient, and cool looking build with some nice visual features. It's a very white case. As you'll see, the uh, aesthetic direction for this build is as pure white as I could get within the budget and lots of RGB so that the future owner of this thing can choose his own colors or disable the RGB if he doesn't like that stuff. And this case comes with three pre-installed 120 millimeter RGB fans and a built-in RGB controller. Nice solid metal front panel with a cool pattern. It looks great. It feels really solid. And there's a little magnetic cover to this bottom part that you can take off. And there's a, a little tray down there to keep your, uh, I don't know, drugs, snacks, some candy or something, your secret candy stash in there. As far as I know, we have a type C connection that's covered up apparently, two USB 3.0 ports, microphone jack, headphone jack, and uh, this is a button for the built-in RGB controller and the power button. Tempered glass side panel and some nice aesthetic touches on the back. Some cool little details all, all around actually. It's actually a, a pretty unique case considering that it's generally very similar to lots of cases that go for this overall aesthetic. All right, uh, let's freaking build this thing, shall we? Uh, for the motherboard, we're going to go with the ASRock Steel Legend B550M motherboard. This is a pretty good board considering it's one of the cheaper B550 boards that are actually good. I think this is a, a great look looking base for our build here. For the processor, we're going to go with this Ryzen 7 5800X. This is the processor from a previous build that I'm upgrading, so this will be its new hope. There you go, little guy. You've served me well. Godspeed 5800X. On to our RAM. This is two 16 gigabyte kits of G-Skill Trident Z clocked at 3600 megahertz. Uh, one of them is Trident Z Neo. The other is just boring ass basic Trident Z non-Neo. Will the lack of Neo in our second kit make this thing a piece of garbage? Well, 
Probably, <laughs> but let's give it the benefit of the doubt and uh, see how it does. And our system drive is this. It's a two terabyte Western Digital Black SN850X NVMe SSD. And this is a Gen 4 NVMe SSD, so we'll be running at full speed using the main M.2 slot on this B550. This drive should be able to get around 7.3 gigabytes per second read speed, which is freaking nuts. It's going to be a fast system drive. And pretty big too. Two terabytes for a system drive isn't too shabby at all. And with that, we're done preparing the motherboard, so it's time to move on to the case. Let's see what we have in here. A bag of screws, a bunch of cables, of course, all the RGB and fan cables for the three pre-installed RGB fans. And yeah, fr from the other side, we can see that the USB-C connection is just a cover. It doesn't actually give you the USB 3.1 connector. So you'll have to buy that yourself and add it, I guess. <laughs> that's, that's a little disappointing. And of course, up here we have an RGB header for the built-in RGB controller. My plan is to daisy chain all the RGB connections together and use the built-in controller from the case to sync everything up. Before I add the power supply, I'm going to install our storage drive. This is an 8 terabyte Seagate Barracuda mechanical hard drive, which will be just five for game storage. And that'll bring this system up to 10 terabytes total storage. Two terabytes for the system drive and eight terabytes for the, the storage drive. That's a ton of storage. Storage. This gets installed in the little drive tray that lives in the basement of the case. For the power supply, we're going to go with this MSI A750F fully modular power supply. And for this build, to roll with the white aesthetic, I splurged on some nice cable mods for the PSU cables. Alright, so now we're going to prepare our cooler. This is the Thermalrite Frozen Magic 240 Scenic AIO Liquid Cooler. It's uh, white, as, as you might have noticed and it has RGB on the CPU pump. This is going to be mounted to the CPU and we'll have to be careful about how we position the tubes. I, I think the only way this will work in this case is to have them towards the front of the case. Otherwise, they'll interact with the rear exhaust fan. It'll be too tight. So I'm, I'm going to put in the motherboard at this point uh, just so we can make sure this all fits. And I'll have to turn around the fans for the radiator to make sure the wires are at the back to keep them out of sight. All right, uh, let's get this installed. Yeah, it does fit fine. <laughs> and we'll install the cooler to the CPU because I, I want to make sure that we won't have any problems with any spacing before we go any further. Apply a few splooches of thermal paste and we'll get that cooler block on the CPU. It is a very tight fit in this tiny case with this uh, top mounted radiator. You know, considering how small this case actually is, it's actually quite comfortable to work in. I've worked with much larger cases and had a way worse time than I am right now. Oh, and as we do our SATA uh, connections, we're plugging in the SATA power for our mechanical drive, but we also need to plug in one SATA power connection for the RGB controller that's built into the case. And let's do a little bit of cable management while we're back here. Bundle up these extra SATA cables and we'll wire up the pump as well. <laughs> this is actually super annoying. The AIO radiator covered up the area with the pump header and the CPU fan header. So I had to kind of do this by feel and it was super tight and annoying and I hated it but I got it done, so I survived, somehow. And we'll plug in our USB 3.0 connection, front audio, front panel, eh, easy stuff. And we're almost done now, if you can believe that. So let's do everyone's favorite part of PC building, the cable management. One challenge with this case is all the RGB and fan cables that we need to deal with. Oh my gosh, there's so much. <laughs> we have our three pin fan connections for all the three fans. They need to be daisy chained together. And we also have the ARGB connections and they also need to be daisy chained together. And then I added the AIO, which adds more fans and RGB into the mix. <laughs> kind of tedious, but it's easy enough. The cable management actually went really well. It's not as neat and tidy as I like. I had to make some sacrifices to the organization because of those PSU cable extenders and the extra fan cables from the AIO, but it, it was very easy to work in this case. There are lots of cable tie-off points and a few built-in Omni-Tape cable ties in very logical locations. Lots of room too, which is actually pretty surprising considering how small the case actually is. And now it's time for everyone's actual favorite part of the build, <laughs> the GPU. This is the MSI Ventus. This RTX 3080, which is a very solid pairing with this Ryzen 7 5800X. This GPU is from a previous build and this is going to be its new home. This is a great GPU considering the price of this build. 
As always with GPUs, the right choice changes from day to day, depending on what's available, what's on sale, what to do, what to use. Uh, I really wish I could have gotten the white GPU for this build. Uh, unfortunately, this doesn't quite match the aesthetic we're going for, but it's not terrible. And it, it's actually a, a really nice looking GPU, so I'm not too fussed about that. And there we go. Holy crap, are we freaking done? Yeah, I, I think we're freaking done. Oh, what a cool little build. Oh, I'm so happy with the way this looks. Man, if only this GPU was white. I don't have the budget to get a different GPU, but <laughs> that would have uh, tied the whole thing together if I could have. All right, uh, we're finally ready to do a post test and uh, power up. Presuming that all goes as planned when I power it on, of course. Cross your fingers for me, people. I really want this one to post because it's a, a tight build. I don't want to have to troubleshoot anything. Here we go. And no. Uh, oh, right. The, the power supply switch. A brain fart. Oh, the motherboard lit up when I turned that on. Uh, okay. Uh, here we go. Hey, that's a good side. Are we going to post? Oh, please tell me we're going to post. I'm not seeing any RGB yet. We're going to have to figure that out. Oh, come on. Come on, baby. Okay, it's been a while. I'm not feeling too great about that. Oh, hey, we got a post. <laughs> We're good to go. In the BIOS, nice. Okay, uh, good CPU temperature, which means our cooler and pump are working good. Man, no RGB though, huh? Wait, wh why do we have RGB on the cooler then? Oh yeah, so the RGB controller on the case is changing the color of the RGB on the cooler. So there must be a break in the connection for the daisy chain. Actually, actually, you know what? Let, let's check that out now. There we go. Yeah, the daisy chain came undone. I think I'm going to electrical tape these together so that that doesn't happen for the customer. Nice. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. As for our system, yep, everything's detected fine. We have our Ryzen 7 5800X. Four 8 gigabyte sticks of DDDDR4 defaulted to 2133 megahertz. Uh, we'll have to enable XMP for those. Uh, just not yet though. I, th I think I'll install Windows first before I mess around with any BIOS settings, just so that I don't have any stability issues. So yeah, I'm super happy that everything's working good so far. So I have my Windows installer on this USB stick. I'm going to go through and install Windows. And of course, I'm going to use the CD key that I got from this video's sponsor, SCD key, to activate the, this copy of Windows. Thank you, SCD key, for that. So let's boot to this drive and get that going now. And through the magic of filming, we're now in the future. A few hours later, I've installed Windows, updated Windows, installed all the drivers, and of course, I went through the BIOS and set the RAM to run at its full 3600 megahertz speed by enabling XMP. So we're up and running and basically good to go. Everything installed nicely. The system's running great. It's perfectly responsive. It's actually so quick and snappy. It boots in like three seconds and it runs beautifully. As for gaming, uh, I didn't do a ton of tests, but I did try out one game that I had installed on a, a hard drive, a Far Cry 6. I'm running at 1080p, although this system would be great for 1440p or even 4K. This is with the maxed out ultra settings, maxed out ray tracing, everything on the backs, and looking very nice indeed, as I think we can all agree. And I got an average of 111 FPS. I, I wish I could have tested out more games, but I don't have time to install a bunch of stuff, do a bunch of tests. This PC is off to its new home tomorrow morning. So this is all we're going to get, unfortunately. One thing I noticed is that even after a decent gaming session, the temperatures were totally manageable. I got a max of 73C on the GPU and only 68C on the CPU. This case actually has great airflow, especially considering the size of it. The fans run pretty darn quiet, even when the system warms up. It's surprisingly cool for a compact MATX case. Speaking of which, how's about I give you a quick little review of the case itself? Yeah, yeah, let's do that. So, uh, building in this case, I had a great freaking time. It was a little bit cramped at times to work in, but I totally put that down to my choice of components. Having a 240 radiator in an MATX build that already has three fans will always make things tight, but everything did fit just fine, and I didn't have to do anything janky. I love the compact nature of this case. You know, lots of micro ATX cases are pretty big. They're not, they're not far off from mid-tower cases, but this one's actually pretty compact, and it feels almost like an ITX PC. I've built ITX PCs that have felt basically as big as this. There actually is quite a bit of room in here to do more even. You get, you could put in a larger GPU, a big boy 40 series GPU, <laughs> that should fit in here no problem. You could mount a radiator in the front of the case or go with an airflow focused build with a big air cooler. Lots of options to build something unique to your own tastes. 
the fans are excellent. They're they're quiet, and I really like the RGB on these things. The RGB controller is good. You can cycle through the colors by pressing the button, or if you hold the button, it cycles the lighting mode. So it'll be pulsing or rotating, or you could connect these up to the motherboard RGB controller if you wanted to control that with the software instead. There's lots of options. One thing I really like is this mesh panel on the front. It has a nice subtle pattern. It's solid metal and it's got this kind of 3D geometric pattern. It's not over the top, just a hint of something more interesting than a flat panel. And yeah, I'm a child, but one thing I freaking love to bits is this secret compartment that's held on magnetically. You can install a 3.5 millimeter optical drive in there if you're into that sort of thing but i love that there's a little hidden drawer in there i'd totally hide my candy in there if i was keeping this pc it would be full of mike and ikes the cable management went well it got a little bit messy over here with all this rgb stuff i, got, I could probably make it a little tidier but eh, we're just gonna call that good enough there are a couple of built-in cable ties to keep everything tight together and honestly if you went with the motherboard's rgb controller you can avoid this entire mess of rgb wires up here near the cable is RGB controller. At no point did I feel like I didn't have enough room to properly manage the cables. It, it was really easy to work in. There's lots of space in the basement. There's actually space for three 3.5 inch hard drives and you can also add six 2.5 inch drives. <laughs> That's a ton of storage options. And of course, it's nice to have a case that actually supports a 3.5 inch optical drive without adding an uh, obvious DVD drive flap above the, uh, the top of the front or whatever, giving it a dated look. You know, it's tucked away, but still accessible. And even the back has a nice look to it. There are a lot of unique little touches here, like this triangular pattern here with this sort of beveled cutout, this hex grid pattern over the GPU ventilation grill, even the hex pattern on the PCIe slot covers. I appreciate seeing these little touches and there are some really nice little touches on this case that have caught my eye. Nice tempered glass cover as well. I, I mean, it, it's just a nice little system that we have here. It's a beautiful case. It's got some great visual touches. It's a great size. It feels like a genuinely compact micro ATX case, which is actually kind of rare. There's lots of room to do stuff. I, I'm super impressed with this case in general. I, I totally get this case again for a future build. So I'm going to give the Fractal Designs Pop Air Micro ATX case a score of nine dweebs out of 11. And I'll throw in a bonus tech dweeb trophy of RGB goodness for that maximum gamer cred. The, the, the trophy is RGB. Can, can, can you see the, the RGB? This took me 10 hours to make. And that brings us to the end. So uh, what do you think of this case? Do any of you have it? Or are you thinking about getting it? Oh, and I'd love to know if you have any other PC cases on your radar that you think I should check out. Or if you have any personal favorites, let me know in the comments below. And while you're down there, click the thumbs up button if you like the video. Or the thumbs down button if you didn't. Uh, subscribe if you haven't done that yet for some dumb reason. I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.